We cannot be religious in the same way as our ancestors. We live in an entirely transformed world. And I, old ideas and practices which nourished our forefathers often seem drained of meaning um, and can even be become sort of repellent or perplexing to us uh, in our modern scientific rationalistic age. But the idea of a reformation is, is not a new one. It, it should be happening all the time. Religions cannot stand still. Uh, otherwise, they just if they cannot ad adapt to their particular modernity, they will become obsolete and fade away. The breath of the spirit seems to be <laughs> flowing my notes about. Um, and so each tradition represents a, a dialogue between a transcendent reality, on the one hand, and the shifting and constantly uh, distressing uh, events in the world here below. And each generation has the responsibility of looking creatively at its past, at its roots, and making that tradition speak to its unique present to answer those particular dilemmas, to answer uh, those particular questions that are thrown up at that moment of history. Um, but that doesn't mean we must be imprisoned in the past. And very often when people talk about reformation, a sort of tinkering goes on. Uh, people sort of try to alter a little doctrine here or there or uh, just to turn a little knob or just try to make some slight alteration and with some mental slates of hand and intellectual fancy footwork try to produce something that has some continuity with sacred tradition. And it's, it's really strange that in our world, which is essentially an age of constant innovation, and constant invention, constantly we are exposed to novelty. We have institutionalized change in our society as no other society has ever done before. And yet in religion we are so timorous about change. Um, and maybe it's a reaction. Uh, but tonight, when I'm looking back to the past, I'm going, I know this may sound an anomaly at the Jesus seminar, I'm going to go back beyond Jesus. Uh, to the Axial Age. You heard about it this morning from Lloyd, Lloyd Gearing. It's the period of history uh, from about 800 to 200 BCE when all the great world religions that have continued to nourish human beings came into existence. Uh, Buddhism and Hinduism in the Indian subcontinent, Confucianism and Taoism in China, uh, monotheism in the Middle East, and rationalism in, in Europe, Greek rationalism. Um, I think it's important to look back at the origins of faith, not just out of an antiquarian curiosity, but because I think these people are often quite shocking to us, uh, and in a very healthy way. They can, they can challenge some of our religious uh, preconceptions um, and make us think things. Further, I think...